Hello, welcome back to the Off Grid family. Today we are on a little adventure. We've decided to come camping. We're staying on a friend's land so we can do pretty much what we want. Um, and we're just going to do a bit of bushcraft, a bit of this, that and the other, and we'll do a bit of tips and tricks and just have a bit of fun, basically. Is there anything you guys want to say? Freedom! Freedom, baby! <laughs> no. No, they've said enough, have they? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's get on and put this tent up. Yeah, baby. Let's get on with it. Mommy! Right, so this is the tent. We've it's been done a while inside, but we've been talking to some friends, so we're a bit behind. So it's about half seven at night. So we're going to dig a fire pit, get the barbecue on. Kids have half a kid's eaten, so she's going to go to bed soon. We're going to have a barbecue. Okay, so as my wife said, we're now digging a fire pit. When you're digging a fire pit, a few things to take into consideration is 
the type of floor. You don't want to be digging um, in places that have like peat under the ground. You can set fires that last for months. You know, you might, you won't even know there's a fire underground and it can pop up months later. Um, we're just in a normal field, so we're okay for that. But another thing is, look around, look at your surroundings, look at the trees, that kind of thing. If you've got any trees hanging over over the top of you, you don't want to have huge bush fires or anything like that. We're in Wales, you know, it would take us months to burn anything really. It's hard enough trying to get enough wood to actually get it burning. But that's our next job. I'll be digging the fire pit, I'll send the kids off to do some collecting of sticks, twigs and rocks and... Rocks? Maybe rocks, why not? We'll burn some rocks, I don't know. Um, get them to do some sticks, twigs, logs, whatever. There's a whole um, forest down there. Um, full of dead woods and it's it's overgrown really badly so there's a lot of live wood that they want chopped out of the way but obviously we can't make a fire with that but um, I'll figure out where I want to dig the pit and um, dig that while they get me some firewood okay so this is the area I've chosen it is far enough away from the tent not to actually set light to anything and we're far enough away from the shrubs and trees and so on to not affect any of that and but it's close enough to give us some heat so I'm not going to dig anything too big, but what I want to do first off is just cut out the turf. So I'm actually going to just cut a line along the turf until it's about the shape I want, about the length I want. Then I'm just going to continue to cut around until I've got a beautiful rectangle. Now I've just cut a rectangle out through the turf and what I'm going to do now is try and attempt to take the turf in as big a piece as I can, take it away from the area so as not to dry it out. So I'm just going to lift up the first section and then cut along it. should hopefully be able to start getting all the turf up in one solid piece if you cut your lines properly of course when you get it far enough you can bend it over hopefully and carry on Now, <coughs> go to the other side, do exactly the same. Now for the last bit, just coming into the middle. Now you can cut this up into squares to make it life easier, but I like to just take it all out, one solid piece. This side. Got a couple of roots to get through. And there we go. Now, now I want to take this as far away from the fire as I can because I don't want to dry it out at all. 
So I'm just gonna roll it up and let it just roll itself back out. There you go. Really good. And now we'll just dig a bit more out and we'll place the mud just around it. So there it is, a tiny little fire pit. It doesn't have to be very deep. Um, you'll keep the wind off the bottom of it, but also it should protect the, the grass. Um, and then I can literally just sp sprinkle the ashes over everything else, you know, over all the plants and stuff, uh, once dried and once cooled, I mean. Um, and then I can just put the turf straight back on top and no one will ever know we were there. Now, everything is damp. So, you know, this is the driest I could find. I had some birch bark, but it's really, really, really old. Um, so it will ignite, but it's going to take a bit of persuasion. Um, and because everything's so wet, uh, well, damp at the moment, I'm going to use some of the char cloth I made um, in a previous video, which I'll link to. Um, but we're going to use some char cloth. Do you remember using char cloth? Yes. What, what happens when you strike uh, and uh, ignite a little bit? It spikes. Yeah, it's, it's red and it, yeah. Right, first thing we need to do is just, I need to go and get some sticks right there. Okay. Okay, so I've got my sticks ready, so hopefully we can get a fire going. Now, in a pit like this, I'd often like to make a raft or just basically have sticks all the way along the bottom to avoid getting um, lots of the, the coolness from the air. But I don't have lots of sticks yet. We need, we've got loads of collecting to do, we're really far behind. If we were in a survival situation, we'd be in a, a lot of trouble now. But, such is life. So what I'm going to do, is I'm just going to make a few along the bottom like that. And then everything will be placed on top and hopefully we can get a decent amount of heat. So, first off, let's get our bit of char cloth. And then what you want to do take your nest and that is basically a nest that's what it's called um, I haven't got a knife on me have you got a knife yeah so what you want to do oh, plop your chart cloth in the center of where you're going to do it there you go now I'm going to try the back of your knife to see if it will yeah, yeah. so you want to fire now some people like to press down into it and, yeah and some people like to fire them and I'm used to firing them but I'm used to having there we go that's one that must be on let's have a look nope okay I'm used to using my bigger knife I might have to go and get that in a sec you can get a decent there we go Okay, now this point a lot of people rush. You don't you need don't to rush. rush. No, you don't need that to. Will just, if you just blow it out, that'll be bad. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take up my nest. Okay. I'm going to poke down. And we're going to start Whoa. increasing the embers. Can you see that? Yeah. The heat at the same time will increase. It's crazy how a little ember can turn into a whole massive fire. Oh, we nearly had ignition then. There we go. Mm -hmm. Now if we can just get that to catch to some of it else. No. Nope. It's a better colour. Now what I'm going to do, trying not to drop the ember, I'm going to turn it over. Because fire always wants to creep to the top, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, there we go. Uh -huh. I'll get down. Oh, we just we... got a fire. But this is now the bit where you want to start trying to help it, help it to get. Can we go going. and get some more sticks? Yes, please. 
the one thing we didn't do because we're in such a short space of time is get everything prepared. Yeah. So we're a bit behind now. So quickly, try and get me smaller, thinner sticks, more like that size if you can. Oh, you want to make like the feathered wood? No, the feather stick. Yeah. No, you don't need to at the moment, okay. hopefully. And you can see by the amount of smoke coming off that how much moisture was still in it. But we got a nice burn. Hopefully we've got enough in there. George, can you still get me some more, mate? Yep. Yeah. Do you want the thin ones? As thin as you can, yeah. And now we'll start getting bigger and bigger. Well, hopefully. Still might lose this fire because we weren't prepared, guys. Oh no. Still possible. Dad, later. Oh, when it's got enough, can we set this on fire and I can pretend it's a torch for a second? Maybe. Okay. Leave this one safe then. Uh. Now I'm placing the sticks on top of each other, one on top, um, and sort of spiralling it up. I'll show you a bit closer. So every time I'm putting a stick on, I'm putting it across and then the next one would go here and so on. And what it's doing is it's creating a lot more air gaps so that hopefully it'll catch really well. Can I put this one in? Yep. Do we just like throw it in? Don't nope. You? I want you to, don't be scared of the fire, but don't be stupid. Let me cut it. Uh, no, you want it that long, I suppose. Now what I want you to do is I want you to place it about there. Drop it. That's mm. it. Kind of. Okay, it doesn't matter. Well. You, you killed my staircase, man. <laughs> that was my spiral staircase to my dream home. Was it going to go up into your lighthouse? Yeah, why not? need a saw. Okay, there's a saw on top of that over there. Now go very careful. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Now you often see me doing all the work in this, but let me just turn to. The, the background and let me show you show you behind the scenes this is what's going on behind they're preparing all the wood for me even shadows trying to help anyway I better get back to the fire whoa are you sure we can lose that no we shouldn't do now okay I, I'm, I'm getting to a bit thicker Wood now, Dad. Yep. Because that we run it. Because obviously right. we'll have to get gradually bigger. Right. Now here I am trying to show you how to light a fire and show you a treat. Basically do a tutorial on how to light a fire but I did one of the most stupid things in fire building in woodcraft in everything hang on that's part of what I'm about to talk about yeah. I put my flint uh, my knife my flint and steel and my char cloth just down out the way somewhere didn't even bother checking where and it just became the pile of wood if you lose your flint and steel in a survival situation that could be it that could be it over don't do that Right, I'll put them there, George, so okay. don't, don't sit on them. <laughs> right, George, you can start giving me longer ones now if you've got any. Um, hmm. If you haven't, it doesn't matter. Uh, I've got some long 
getting thick ones. Yeah. Exactly a minute ago what we didn't need. Yeah. Are we making like a peak shape now? Why do you think you, you put it up like this in a peak? Now, George, if you come down, the right. smoke should go above you. Shouldn't go in your face so much. Yeah, right. Um, so why do you think that's it's the same in a house fire, George? If it, there's a house fire, <laughs> crawl along the floor. The smoke rises. So why, we, why do we do it like this? Because it like traps it and kind of, and then it will just no, collect no, all. I don't know. Uh, no, I think exactly the opposite in one respect. Come around here. Okay. I'm, I'm acting as a fire reflector and it's hitting you in the face. Um, basically, air can get into wherever it likes now. And so it can, it's basically feeding the fire. Can I put this one in like as a peak? Uh, no, I'm going to do the rest of this for a okay. second, okay? Because okay, I just want to wanna make it so that we don't have to keep coming back to it and I can get on with cooking and stuff. Okay. Well, getting food ready. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want this one? Yeah. Give it a. It's nice and big. If you find one longer than that, mm -hmm. but with this sort of thing on, yeah. get it for me. Okay. I don't want it for the fire, but we'd use it as a pot hanger. Okay, guys. If you find one like quite nice and long, and it has to stick out, it's like like a white shape, like this. This, yeah, but it's a bit shorter like that. Let's say they have another one, stuff like that. If you find stuff like that. It's okay. Next thing I'd like to do is make a fire reflector. And a lot of people believe that is to reflect the heat of the fire, which is true. But another really good thing is, have you ever noticed when you sit over a fire? By the way, Chris, there was a Pippa Strel bat just went past. Have a look up every now and again. No, they're lovely. They're tiny little bats. Um, sorry. Um, have you ever noticed when you lean over a fire, suddenly all the smoke starts going in your face? That's because it, you act like a chimney kind of thing. So if you have a fire reflector at the back, it tends to suck towards that and go out the way so it's not coming back into your camp. And it will help a lot of people with, you know, getting smoke all over their faces and in their eyes and stuff. Okay, that's lovely and warm, isn't it? We decided to get the disposable barbecue out as well to get a bit of barbecued meat in us. It's my wife's idea, don't, you know, don't kill me. We've got to make certain sacrifices. She's come out after all. This is genuinely my favourite time of night. Fire's roaring. There's a moon in the sky. Bats are flying around overhead. Just beautiful. Not sure how much of this will show up on camera, but what I've done, I get a glow stick, also known as a snap stick, and I've bent over a piece of wood and I've just put it just in front of the wood pile so that you know not to trip into the fire because when the fire goes down to a certain bit, you can't see any of the wood there and I just don't want anyone, you know, I've got kids with me. I don't want anyone tripping into the fire or anything. Not that they will, but it's just another added bit of safety. You know what I mean? If you've got them, use them. First injury of the holiday. And that's why you bring plasters. Chris, do you want to say anything? Well. First night. First night, beds are done, tent's ready, food on the go, dogs after a sausage. Are you happy kids? Yeah, every person should live like this. It's beautiful isn't it? Yeah. Lily, do you... This is what life should be like, just sitting here, two fires. Munching. It's just beautiful when everything's dark. He's going off solar lights and he's just looking at the stars and it's just like, I want to sleep outside tonight, but I'm too frightened. There's nothing to be frightened of. It's just beautiful. Water's running. It's like, it's perfect. No night, guys. See you in the morning. <laughs>